Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. The raw diet is a very controversial topic in the pet industry right now. Some pet owners feel that our pet's ancestors ate a raw diet and that it's best to feed our domesticated animals the same type of food. On the other hand, there are people who believe that raw food can be a house for bacteria and some very dangerous parasites that could make our pets sick. So which side of the fence should you be on? Is raw food safe? Is it harmful to our dogs? Is it healthy? Is it going to give your pet all the nutrition that they need? Today I was able to speak with Mark Sapper and he is the chief marketing officer at Stella and Chewy's. Stella and Chewy's is a company, if you've done any research on the topic of raw food, you certainly have heard this name before. Uh, They focus on making healthy and safe commercial raw food for our pets. Um, Mark was able to tell me more about the diet, its um, pros and cons, the benefits of buying a commercial raw diet instead of making your own at home. And we also chatted a little bit about the company's newest product, which is really neat and innovative. It's actually a kibble, but it's been rolled in the company's um, raw food mix. So it's a kibble that still offers the benefits of raw, which is something that um, I think is going to pique the interest of a lot of pet owners. So without further ado, this is what Mark had to say. You know, we launched this business almost 15 years ago, and um, our founder, Marie Moody, had two dogs who were Stella and Chewy's. Um, they're, they're not mythical figure. They're, they're real dogs that, that had real challenges with, with nutrition. Um, 15 years ago, really commercialized raw diets didn't exist. Marie went to the vet and started learning about nutrition and, and diets. Um, the internet didn't really exist. She was reading books and talking to vets and nutritionists, and it became clear to her that 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 her dogs would would thrive on a diet that was most similar to what dogs ate in the wild. You know, not necessarily manufactured food as it existed that day, but a raw diet. And sure enough, she started feeding her 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 dogs a raw diet, um, fresh meat. And organs and her dogs began to thrive and and it became very clear to her that nutrition matters and as a pet parent who loves her dogs it became very clear that there was an opportunity to help pet parents because no one was commercially making a raw pet food diet available and she started in her own you know kitchen in her own apartment in Brooklyn at the time you know, going to the butchers and, and getting meat and making this diet and then door to door in Manhattan, taxi by taxi, developing at the time what was a frozen business and and taking it to stores and, and, and building the business door by door. And, you know, not surprisingly, it, it began to take off because pet parents want the best for their animals and they were seeing a meaningful difference in terms of vitality in terms of palatability in terms of performance and it got bigger and bigger and bigger and it got so big that she needed to come back to Wisconsin where she grew up and start making the food and that's when she created our first kitchen and now we're on to our fourth kitchen as demand has increased and the the business has evolved and you know we've gone from frozen to adding a freeze dried component which is for many pet parents more convenient, shelf-stable, it doesn't require the preparation or the storage. We've added a meal mixer, which is allows pet parents the ability to introduce some raw into the bowl and not necessarily feed raw exclusively. And then more recently, we've launched a baked kibble with a raw coating and an element of raw. And that's sort of our evolution of the business. Um, we, we really do believe in the, the power of a raw diet. And um, for me, as a pet parent, it provides a great solution for a lot of people. I mean, if your dog's finicky, it's a great solution. If your dog has certain pet sensitivities to ingredients, a great solution, because the far, far majority of our diets are true limited ingredient diets, and they're one protein, and that's it. 
Um, our dogs are high in, in rich in omegas. It's great for skin and coat. Our our dog our diets are high in glucosamine and chondroitin naturally because of the, the the bone in them. So it really provides a great solution for a lot of pet parents, and we're seeing more and more pet parents get more interested and knowledgeable on what's in their pet food. And um, as they've gotten more diligent and more deliberate, they're gravitating towards solutions like ours that, that are more pristine solutions for their animals. Absolutely. And I know, you know, a lot of, you talked a little bit about nutritional challenges and those seem to be becoming uh, more commonly seen in a lot of pets. Um, and yeah. so one of the big things that I always hear from people about the raw food diet is um, that major difference between raw and and traditional uh, commercial diets that include, um, you know, some fillers, artificial ingredients, some some um, ingredients that aren't as healthy for our pets. Yeah. And the yeah. raw diet, um, at, at the same time as people are thinking, you know, there's some healthier aspects to it as well, um, there are a lot of people that worry about the raw diet and contamination of the food and things like that. Can you speak on that? Yeah, I... I... I'd love to speak on both the ingredients and the, the, the food safety. I agree with you on ingredients. I mean, the reality is every single one of our diets at its foundation is 90 to 95% meat organs and bones. So, like, essentially outside of vitamins and minerals and some vegetables, you're getting 95% meat organs and bones. And, you know, the, the, the ingredients are proudly put on the label. The sourcing we're proud of. All of these are coming from a USDA-inspected facility. Um, none of this is 4D meat. It can't be 4D meat. It's, it's, it's meat, organs, and bones. So I think the ingredients matter. And the beautiful thing about a raw diet is 90 to 95% meat, organs, and bones. And that, to me as a pet parent, gives me a lot of confidence in, in what I'm feeding. Separately, I think there are a lot of questions on, on the safety of, of raw food. And there should be because pet parents want to know what they're feeding their dogs is safe. And I will tell you, when when this business originally launched, you know, you know, Marie was making this stuff in her own kitchen, which which probably candidly wasn't the, the most safe solution. And I think Marie quickly realized about two years into her journey that that it wasn't enough just to have great nutrition, but it needed to come with food safety. And she was keenly aware of pathogens and she knew she needed to figure out a way to eliminate pathogens to not only deliver great nutrition but to deliver food safety and Marie looked everywhere and she knew she wasn't going to cook the food because that, that obviously changes the, the value of the food and Marie found HPP which was being used on the human side, it's recognized by the FDA as a, as a pathogen killing step and she started doing tests with, with HPP, and she quickly realized that it would allow her to eliminate pathogens, but at the same time not denature or not devalue the nutrition value or the palatability. And at the time, which was a very controversial decision and not wildly embraced by, by the pet community, made a commitment to HPP every single product because she felt that we still continue to feel that it's the safest way to deliver raw that eliminates pathogens but still delivers all of the value of a raw diet. And initially there were other competitors that, that that didn't participate and it seems like over time more and more and the far majority of people are now HPP because it's a what we think a required step to ensure food safety and to ensure our, our food is pathogen free. And that's something we do. And I know um, there are people that don't, and, and look, that's their, that's their path, and I, I can only worry about our business and what we think is best for, for pet parents, and we believe strongly that it provides extra protection and allows our products to be pathogen-free. And beyond that, as an organization, we have a tremendous amount of procedures in place to ensure food safety, starting from all of our incoming ingredients, making sure they're coming from qualified sources, sources that are USDA or equivalent inspected. When the meat comes in, 
we have our own process to ensure that the meat is coming in clean and in spec. Our kitchens were constantly testing for for pathogens environmentally. We're testing product as we make it significantly to make sure before we release anything, we hold it to ensure that it's pathogen free. So it's not just leaning on HPP as that step. It's a collective and a holistic approach to food safety that we're proud of and it's always improving and always getting better just like any business. And that's how we approach food safety and that's what we do to ensure for pet parents that they're getting product they can feel good about in terms of nutrition as well food safety. So that's a big difference. Um, you know, the first thing that I thought of as I, I'm listening to you talk is um, it's it's such a huge difference between making your own raw food at home um, because, of course, then you're responsible for uh, the ingredients that are going into it and the way that they're prepared and making sure that you're following um, as many food safety you know, guidelines as you can. And I think, um, like yeah. you said in the beginning with Stella and Chewy's, you know, cooking it in just a standard kitchen, obviously not for lack of caring about your pet, but it, it's just impossible yeah. to get it, um, you know, as safe as a commercial raw diet can get it when you use I, those di- other technologies. I, I think that's fair. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting people shouldn't make homemade food. I mean, I think it's wonderful that, that, that people have the passion and the time and um, the resources to do that. And I think more than likely it's perfectly safe and more than likely even if somehow salmonella, you know, from the countertop from something else or a sort of environmental pathogen got in there, I think we all know dogs are, are fairly resistant so again, I'm not, I don't want to suggest that we're anti people making their food at home. We just provide what we think is a, a great solution for those that perhaps don't have the resources time as well. We have a lot of steps in there that should give them the confidence in, in food safety as well. But, but, but the reality is, um, and I think pet parents know this that make their own food, there's, there's always risk with pathogens because they're everywhere and, and they're around and, um, we should all be aware of that. We're certainly aware of it, and that's why we do everything we do to ensure food safety. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And, um, you know, it's, certainly there are, are pet parents out there that have the, the time, the ability to make um, the food at home, but it certainly sounds like a commercial raw food diet. There's a lot of safety measures in place that you can't get um, at home, first of all. Um, and second of all, sure. you know, when I talk to anybody or anybody asks me about the raw food diet, it's instant. They, almost instantly the concern is um, the safety of it. So it, it sounds yeah. like to me that, um, you know, going commercial is um, – it's a way for pet owners to still provide that the benefits, the health benefits of the raw food diet, but they don't have to worry about um, contaminating themselves or their pets at home um, or anything like that and dealing with actually creating the raw food themselves. Yes, I, I agree with that. And I think pet parents should, should do their research. There are different raw providers that have different standards and different requirements we're proud of our requirements. There are other there are other raw diets that that likely have similar expectations and requirements. But pet parents, as they're making decisions, should do their research. And I'm confident when they do, they'll see what makes us unique and special. With raw, um, you know, feeding raw diet, are there certain vitamins, minerals that you add uh, to the raw food, or do they all, everything that a dog would naturally need, does it come from the ingredients itself? Yeah, great question. Um, we, we do add vitamins and minerals, and we think it's important, and, and I will tell you, 99% of, of, of everything that's required comes naturally. Um, likely on many levels, everything comes naturally, but the reality is, when you're dealing with natural ingredients, right, apples and, and meat, an apple today isn't an apple tomorrow. A piece of meat today isn't exactly a piece of meat tomorrow. Naturally, there's inconsistencies, right? Of course. And, and, and separately, naturally, vitamins and minerals break down. And the vitamins and minerals of an apple 
today are different than what they are in 20 days, and oftentimes that's when you see produce come in and out. It, it changes. Sure. And we don't feel personally as a company that, that it's in the best interest of the pet parents not to add extra insurance and, and add vitamins and minerals in addition to 100% be confident that every single bag from day one to day 360 is, is 100% delivering on those AFCO required vitamin minerals to allow for great nutrition and vitality. So we do deliberately and intentionally add vitamins and minerals. And we think that's the most responsible thing. If we didn't, we would literally feel like it's required to test every single bag given the inconsistencies and, and we would feel less confident at day 360 than we do now where we know we're completely 100% compliant from day one to the end of our, our shelf cycle. And that's why we do it. I mean, that's why humans take vitamins and minerals similarly in the same way and why we made that decision. Again, there are different companies out there that have different approaches. Um, our approach is always about pet parents and always about what we think is right for their dogs, and we think that's the right thing to do. Yeah, certainly. I, I agree with that as well. And are there some dogs who, um, or or pets in general, I guess, um, are there health conditions or anything like that? Are there certain types of dogs that shouldn't be eating a raw food diet, or is it something that's healthy for all dogs in all life stages? Well, I, I, I need to be careful on that because to blanket suggest that I think would be irresponsible, meaning there, there are diets that, that, or dogs that, that perhaps have a specific issue. Maybe, maybe it's, I don't know, a disease and, and they need a diet that has less than 8% fat. So right, absolutely. I don't want to, I don't want to blanket say that our diet is appropriate for every dog out there. I think if your dog has an issue, you need to lean on the vet. More specifically, I could say for 98% of dogs that are don't have a specific sort of more issue, it's a great diet. Um, it's great nutrition. It's it's unbelievably high in protein. It's unbelievably low in carbs. It it is great fuel that dogs thrive on and, and beyond thrive on love. If you've ever put a, uh, you know, a bowl of freeze dried down versus a bowl of kibble, it's, it's, it's a Absolutely. different unlock. Absolutely. Um, you know, they, they, you know, most dogs will eat anything. I get it. But, but for those dogs that are finicky or even not, the, the level of excitement is different um, and unmatched. But, but again, for the far, far, far majority of dogs that are eating kibble, it's, it's, a great solution. I just want to be careful to say it's great for everyone because there are certain minority dogs that have specific issues and they need a specifically catered, perhaps, diet, and the vet should help them more on that solution. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I agree with that as well. But, um, you know, the raw diet is it's safe for puppies, um, you oh, know, yeah. older, it's, senior oh, yeah. dogs, it's, all of that. Yeah, it, 100%. It's, 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 it's great for. It's an all life stage diet, and obviously, to be able to say that, it's not just me with an opinion. AFCO has strict guidelines of what is appropriate for all life stages in terms of calcium, in terms of sodium, in terms of vitamin D. We craft these diets to make sure we're completely compliant for all life stages. It's a great diet for all life stages. It's a great diet for small breed to big breed, and we truly believe that that any element of raw in a dog's diet is better than none, and there's positive that come from it. And we have a lot of different ways and different offerings that allow pet parents to either feed it exclusively or to feed it as an element. I think, you know, right now um, on our frozen, the far majority of people that frozen, it's a great economical way to feed raw. On our free stride business, I'd say it's split. Half of them feed it exclusively and likely buy our patties, and half of them buy our meal mixers and love the ability to boost nutrition and boost palatability in their dogs' kibble. 
Yeah, and it, that's actually a perfect segue because, um, you know, now I want to jump in and kind of talk more about selling Chewies. And you have touched on um, the many different products. So it allows, you know, that flexibility of do you want to feed 100% raw? Um, and I know for a lot of pet owners, it's not that they don't want to feed um, a high quality raw diet, but it, it may be. Um, a an affordability issue it's just a um you know it's too expensive so you have other alternatives to add um toppers and mixers and um you know yeah. just kind of add those benefits to your everyday kibble diet which i think is great um one it it makes it more affordable which all of us are on a budget now and so um that's a big concern for a lot of people that i speak with a lot of pet owners um, but it also makes it easy for pet owners and the frozen as well. It's, you know, if you think about making raw food at home, what does that entail? First of all, before you even begin, it's a ton of research and a ton of work to figure out um, the recipes, you know, for your dog's nutritional needs. And then it's all the prep work and, and things like that. You have to go to the store, you have to go to the butcher shop, you have to, you know, get the ingredients and you have to prep them. And um, so it, it adds, there's a lot of great benefits um all around with you know just the all of the Stella and Chewy's lines which is what was um is is what sticks out to me really about the brand I mean it's obviously the high quality diet but um that you you really make it easy for pet owners to um pick whatever they need whether it's a full on diet or whether it's just a little food top or something extra um you know to give those dog their dog that nutritional benefits yeah I, I, you know, thank you for the feedback, and you know, I I agree. Um, I think um, we recognize that that you know, not everyone can feed 100 percent exclusive raw, and that, that that doesn't suggest they're not great pet parents. It's just it's just the reality. Um, but we've provided a lot of different ways to either feed raw exclusively or to provide more pet parents an opportunity to, to introduce raw and have an element of raw. So we have a frozen business, and our frozen business is where we started. The benefit of the frozen business, it is, you know, the most pristine way of delivering raw. It's basically meat that's, that's grinded and, and HPP'd and immediately frozen and, and packaged. Um, as well as it's a more economical way, it's about 35% cheaper to feed a raw diet frozen than it is freeze-dried. So for those that are most often all in, frozen is a great way to feed raw exclusively. Separately, you know, we recognize that, 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 that not everyone is feeding exclusively as well. You know, not everyone perhaps has the time to let it thaw and prepare, you know, for, for me, I feed raw. I put it out the night before, and it's fairly methodical. And um, But for other people, what people are busy, you know, that's why we launched freeze-dried. Freeze-dried is shelf-stable, so it doesn't require freezing. It doesn't require thawing. It, it, it's just like our pantry. You take it in and out, and you feed it. Um, and that's the benefit of, of our freeze-dried diet. We have patties that make great meal solution. Um, we provide feeding guidelines, and, and it's a fairly easy transition from kibble to freeze-dried, and um, that's why we have our patties business. And then separately, about four years ago, we, we recognized that many consumers weren't feeding freeze-dried exclusively. About half of them were adding it to their kibble, which is great. It's, it's a great way to make kibble more interesting for the dog and more palatable and more nutritious. And we, we launched meal mixers, which is a bit more convenient way to add raw into the kibble bowl. And it's a sort of smaller shape, more kibble-esque, and it allows you to sort of mix it in and the dogs go crazy. Unfortunately, pet parents find that often dogs find the raw and pick out the raw first and then get to the kibble. <laughs> and it just shows you, you know, the power of raw and then... They end up adding, you know, two scoops and three scoops, and the dogs are delighted and more delighted because they're getting more raw into the diet. But meal mixers make it really easy and convenient and affordable for pet parents to begin to introduce raw into the bowl. And that business has become bigger and bigger as more and more people are curious of raw, but perhaps not yet ready or 
fully aware of all the benefits to to easily engage and not change their behavior. And it seems to be sort of the gateway of people into raw. Having said that, we recognized years ago that that um, looking at the kibble landscape, that we felt there was an opportunity to come out with with a better kibble, a less processed kibble, a kibble with with better ingredients in a kibble with an element of raw. And we've spent three years developing that. We know there's a lot of kibbles out there. We wanted to do something that was unique and special and more consistent with Stella and provided pet parents that were feeding kibble a better solution and allowed them to introduce to our brand and and make feeding raw or an element of raw more convenient. And that's really why we launched it when we launched Kibble, and I think for us, we, we will still continue to, at our foundation, have raw, frozen, and freeze dried. but the reality is it's not truly available for everyone in terms of, of, of resources and, and costs. Um, for many, it's not perfectly convenient. you got to get the Kibble, and you got to get the raw, and for us, launching a great Kibble with an element of raw is a perfect solution for a wide number of people. And the initial reaction reaction we've gotten has been unbelievably positive. And um, we're excited to have that as a compliment to our raw for those that are feeding kibble, but want something better. And I think to me, what makes our kibble special and unique is one is we, we bake our kibble and the far majority of kibbles out there in the world are, are extruded. Extruding was created about 80 years ago by by big manufacturers because it allowed them to make a lot of product quickly and cheaply. You know, the downside of it is it basically nukes the kibble as a as a kill step, and much of the nutritional value and much of the sort of overall value is destroyed. And then you know they they try and offset that at the end by adding stuff um you know for us it was really important to get into kibble is to do it a less processed way in a more um what we think is is nutritious way and that's baking it the temperatures and baking is at the max 200 degrees and it's a slow cook um which which the kibble players don't like because it's slow and that ruins efficiency. For us, it's less about efficiency, it's more about nutrition. And it's a more nutritious kibble um, because it's baked and that's a big point of difference and it's more consistent with our philosophy that less processed is better. Um, and that's what we're doing. Separately, our ingredients are different. You know, the far majority of kibbles out there aren't using grass-fed beef. Um, they're not using cage-free chicken. They're not using organ meat. We love organ meat. We know how important organ meat is in our raw diet, and we're proudly putting it into our kibble as primary ingredients. Um, we're putting organic fruits and vegetables into our kibble. Um, when you buy our beef kibble, it's it's called grass-fed beef recipe because at least 25% of that bag is grass-fed beef. The far majority of kibbles are beef plus potatoes plus lentil because collectively those equal 25%. We don't need to play that game because 25% at least of that bag is proudly beef. Our diets are 70% meat. So these are uniquely different kibble offerings than what the far majority of people are doing, both in terms of process and ingredients. And then the magic is at the end where, where all of our kibble is coated with our raw So we're taking our raw patties, we're grinding them up, and we're coating them on kibble, which for dogs is is special. And again, you know, we're tricking them into thinking this is all raw, and the reaction is unbelievable, and our food is more palatable. And that, in tandem, makes for what we think is a great kibble solution. And we're excited to partner with Neighborhood Pet and make it available. And initially, the reaction has been very positive. And um, for those that are couldn't afford or weren't yet ready to go all the way in and to raw. It does require educating. It does require a behavior change. It allowed them to not change behavior, but to provide a better kibble and begin to see the benefits of raw. 
Yeah, and I will say too, um, and it'll it's not up on our um, top dogs tips website yet, but I did receive a bag of the new kibble um, to review and to try with our dogs. And um, so we have a chocolate lab who will eat anything and everything, and it doesn't even need to be food. Um, but then we also have a little beagle mix, and she's very particular. Um, I typically, usually I feed a homemade, um, it's cooked, it's not raw, but a, a homemade dog food diet. So um, she's had that. We've had her since she was a puppy, and that's pretty much all she's ever known. So um, to get her to try try and eat traditional commercial kibble sometimes can be a little challenging she's even picky with her dog treats just because she's used to fresh um you know the the protein sources the enticing smells and things like that that you don't get with um, a lot of commercial diets so she's typically fairly picky when it comes to commercial and um she gobbled the Stella and Chewies right up so um I think like you said that just that little coating of rot sort of tricks them into thinking that um you know they're getting this really enticing raw food when it's actually just a little coating of raw food Food and then the inside is the kibble. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm delighted to hear that. And um, I'm sure the team will be excited and proud because we spent a lot of time on making sure that that this kibble would be phenomenally well. Obviously, nutrition and food safety are important to us, but palatability is a point of difference in everything we do. Um, we know there's nothing more concerning for a pet parent to see their dog not eating and um palatability is, is, is really important, and I'm glad to hear your dog liked it, and we're hearing similar feedback from, from other dogs, and it's rewarding, and, and um, I really would encourage pet parents, you know, even if the dogs are loving their food, just from a nutrition perspective to consider giving it a try, but also certainly from a palatability perspective, there's a meaningful difference in unlock, and, and that's great to hear from, from, from you, and um, you know, we're always looking at new ways to unlock nutrition and palatability, and um, we're going to continue to do that. If you have any other questions on the raw food diet, um, either that I could answer for you or that I can pass on to Mark and get an answer for you from Stella and Chewy's, please jump on our website. It's theoryofpets.com. You can leave your questions there. You can send them to me uh, in an audio file. and I might use those on future podcasts, which is really helpful for other pet owners that are having the same questions. Um, a lot of you guys have the same types of questions. I have the same questions as you as well. It's a pet owner thing. We want what's best for our pets. So we end up asking a lot of similar questions um, but of course if you just want to email those there's a spot for that like I said on our website theoryofpets.com it'll come to me in an email and I will be sure to get back to you as soon as possible while you're on the site if you could take just a quick minute uh, if you click the link for the iTunes reviews you can get on there and leave just a quick review if you like the podcast that helps me a lot when I reach out to experts like Mark I can show them that people are listening they enjoy it they like what they're hearing they want to know more information information about pets, pet food, and the industry. Um, so if you guys wouldn't mind doing that, it only takes a minute and it's a huge help for me. Uh, if you have any questions, again, be sure to send them along and I will be back next time with another great interview.